Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, it is Memorial Day here in the States. And this morning at nine o'clock, DHL showed up at my door. Now, all these companies are usually shut down on Memorial Day, but uh, a week and a half ago, I was contacted by the Banana Pie Company and they wanted to send me one of their boards for review and testing and a few tutorials on YouTube. I definitely said, okay, send it on. So they shipped it out Friday and it got here on Monday from China. Now what we have here is the Banana Pie M3. This board on paper seems like a beast. It is packed with features and it just seems super powerful. Now the thing is, if the software isn't good, the hardware is useless. So we're gonna have to get into that. But first I wanted to do an overview of the hardware. This sucker has an eight core or an octa-core 1.8 gigahertz CPU. It is an A83T ARM Cortex A7. It has one megabyte of L2 cache built into the CPU. The GPU is a PowerVR SGX544 MP1. It has two gigabytes of DDR3 memory. On the back side here, we have a micro SD card slot, which is good up to 64 gigabytes. Here, we have a SATA port for running off a of SSD or a hard drive. Here's your SATA power. We'll power it from the ground and the power here. So if I wanna hook up a SSD, which I'm probably gonna do in the future, we have that option. It has built-in Wi-Fi, 802.11, B, G, and N, built-in Bluetooth 4.0. Has HDMI 1.4 out here. We have an infrared sensor, a microphone sensor, power reset buttons, um, OTG USB on the go storage, or you can also power the unit from this, but they supplied, well, they, added a barrel jack, which is really cool because you can get a lot more power through the barrel jack than you can through that little tiny US, you know, the micro USB connector. So another cool thing is it has eight gigabytes of onboard storage. So it has a little eight gigabyte E MMC chip built in. Um, I mean, there's just so much stuff here. We got audio, audio in for the onboard microphone, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, uh, two USB 2.0 ports, ethernet 10 by 100, 40 GPIO pins. I mean, this thing seems like it's gonna do a good job. So here's the size comparison. This is the Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, my Pi 3 right now is tied up in another project, but this is the same size, so. Here's a RAS, or a Rose Apple Pi, so we can get a size comparison of those. And a Raspberry Pi Zero. So roughly about the same size. It's a bit tad longer than the Raspberry Pi, but we've got a lot more power here, it seems like. Um, I'm gonna flash Android 5.11 to an SD card. And I'm gonna boot it up, and in this video, I'm just going to do some benchmark tests. We will run in Tutu Benchmark, Geekbench, SunSpider, maybe a couple other ones. We'll just see how it performs. Um, it did come with a few heat sinks, but it doesn't have any, I don't have any sticky pads right now. I got some coming in the mail, but it's gonna take a while. So let's get into it. This thing looks awesome. Let's see how the software performs. Okay, so we're booted up to Android 5.1.1. Now one thing I noticed was the image that you can download from their website does not contain the Google Play Store. What I did was I created a system folder on my desktop computer. I placed the... It's not the newest GAPS, it was a version of GAPS. And I transferred it using ADB. So now I have Google Play installed and it's working great. Um, the unit seems to respond very well. We have Bluetooth. I have Wi-Fi connected. 
Bluetooth can be connected to controllers. Um, I connected my Nyko PlayPad. We're going to go into CPU-Z. See what we got here. 8 core, A7 at 1.8 gigahertz. Um, Power VR, SGX 544 MP. Manufacturer, all winner, which is the CPU make. Now it's showing screen resolution of 1280 by 720. I did set it to 1080. That's odd. Total RAM, 2 gigabytes. 5.1.1. Okay, cool. We have thermal um, temperature gauges here. Okay, so first one I'm going to test out is Geekbench 3. Oh, I don't have any heat sinks on this unit right now, so we'll see how it performs. I have read that it has a thermal thro throttling built into the CPU, so it will downclock the CPU when it reaches a certain degree. But we're going to test it straight out of the box like it is. First up, Geekbench 3. What I'm going to do here is run these benchmarks, and I'm just going to either fast forward or skip to when it's done because these can take a while. So single core was 303 and multi core was 1230. Not too great. Um, yeah, not too great at all for this first test. I do have some automatic background updates going on which could have affected performance a bit, but not by much. Um, I was hoping for at least a 25 to 3,000 on the multi-core with this 8-core at 1.8. Well, let's try the next benchmark here. Let's go ahead and close all these. Nothing was running in the background except for some Google Play updates. Next up, an oldie, but a goodie. I have used this on a lot of older devices. Eleven thousand four hundred and fourteen. For some reason, when I let this go, the screen goes black on this app. Another one, not so great, but not super terrible. Okay, so here we're going to do 3D Mark now. This is a very intense test, so hopefully I don't get any overheating or freezing. Could have sworn I had already installed this. Okay, so we're not going to do 3D Mark right now. I will do and 2 2 Benchmark, which is another very hard test on any Android device, really. So when I run this on my iPhone 6S, it's not the 6S Plus the 6s I get 132,000 is my score now I know it's a different operating system they do run the same test though twenty seven thousand like I said before my iPhone 6s scores a one hundred and thirty two thousand so this is way off um not too bad for a cheap you know, single board computer, but not too great with that 8 core at 1.8 gigahertz. Now, I know that these are just benchmarks. We're going to get out of here. And I got one more test here. I'm just going to run a browser benchmark. Do on every device I've ever owned, pretty much. So I'm going to run Sun Spider. 
I have run this on pretty much every device I've ever owned that is able to connect to the internet. This is the older Sun Spider. They have a new jet stream, but I have a baseline in my head of what this, you know, a decent performance out of Sun Spider. Now this is just a browser benchmark. Okay, 1,284. For reference, I have a older i7-2600 and it scores a 160. 168 compared to the 1284 so this is not bad for a mobile browser score that's it right now guys for the um, benchmarking and just a quick overview of the banana pie m3 so what I really want to do is test emulation on this you guys know I love it I love it you guys love it that's why you watch this um, next videos that I'm going to be doing I will test out PSP, Dreamcast, SNES, N64, um, PlayStation 1, all of the available emulators on Android I'm going to test. Now I know the benchmarks came in and they were somewhat disappointing to me but I know this thing is way faster than the Raspberry Pi 3. It is. Now, the the big thing is you can have awesome, super fast hardware, but if the software is not there, if the development for the software is not there, then you just have super fast hardware that will just sit on the desk. It's basically what it will be. But if they keep updating, which I've looked on their website, they have some Debian, Ubuntu Mate, this Android build, uh, Raspbian build, and a bunch of other um, Linux-based operating systems for this. It looks like they are definitely working on the software side. I'm going to come back and I will do some in the, my next few videos. It's going to be emulation on the Banana Pi M3. So if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below or you can send me a private message. And like always, thanks for watching.